Today I want to make a start on the Great Tower and the North Western Tower. That's the one with the oubliette at the base. I'm going to start with the Great Tower. But first I just want to say I've removed the small crane just for a little while. They were needed for real life construction but are in the way for Minecraft construction. At the end of every build session I'll replace the crane and the scaffolding. So the appellation great just meant large rather than grand or special. It's the Great Tower because it's bigger and taller than all the others. Great Towers could be any shape, could be freestanding or part of the wall. Often they were also the donjon, although I'll talk about the donjon in more detail in a later video. I'm not sure what I'll do with this tower yet. It might contain a residence or a chapel or it may be purely administrative and defensive. I'm just not sure. What I do know is that it will be about 33 blocks tall. It has a diameter of 20 blocks and as you can see, the walls are five blocks thick. I'm building up the spiral staircase as I go. That's by far the easiest way to do it. notice that I've got a row of polished andesite going in. Every 10 feet or so there was a course of precisely dressed stone that was added to the wall. While the walls were constantly checked during construction to ensure they were straight, this levelling course provided a firm flat base for the section above. It ensured the walls remained straight and strong and that andesite should have gone right the way across right the way through the wall. I knew that when I was planning this. I forgot it when I was building it, so do as I say, not as I do. I will be going back to remove all that cobble and replace it with andesite. I'll be placing my levelling course slightly further apart than the usual ones, 12 feet or every four blocks, simply because three blocks look too close together. Minecraft adjustment. Now I've put in potholes for the supporting beams for the floor. And I'm continuing with raising the wall, but I am at this stage planning where I want the first of my arrow loops. I will say there will probably not be enough arrow loops in this tower, simply again because of the restrictions of Minecraft. I don't want to make these walls completely hollow and that's really the only way I could have enough. So I'm compromising. Less arrow loops, more solid wall. I'm putting in stone corbels under the potholes to support the floor beams. And these are big, sturdy, strong oak beams which will last centuries. And now that the beams are in, we can do the floor, which is oak planking. Now to work on the arrow loops, these are recessed into deep niches in the wall. And I decided to put them lower so that I had a better view straight down. Arrow loops are supposed to provide really good vision down and out. And one thing that regularly happened with building a castle was constant adjustments to the cranes and to their pulleys so that you could get stone up as high as possible. And that's what I'm doing now and what I'll be doing for the whole build. Crane adjustments. There's a lot that's interesting about building castles and then there's a lot that's just repetitious, like building the walls and filling them in with rubble.
Now at this point I decided that it would be better to have two arrow loops on each side, at least that increased the number that I had. The niches for arrow loops are supposed to be angled to allow archers maximum protection and maximum field of fire. I'm still thinking about that one. It's going to take some adjustment to get this right in Minecraft because of the scale. I'm thinking maybe stone brick walls between each of the loops. We'll see. Plus, there's the problem that my arrow loops are 50 centimetres wide, whereas real ones are about seven centimetres wide. Again, Minecraft. So that's as far as I want to go with the Great Tower today. I need to get down into the quarry again as stone is starting to run low. All that's needed now is to put the scaffolding back in. Has no one ever told those guys a quarry is not a great place to play tag? Bringing up the southern curtain wall so that it can continue to act as a ramp to make working on the tower a lot easier. Now that that's done, I want to work on the western curtain wall and the northwestern tower, which for the time being I'm calling the prison tower. The wall and the tower are each three metres thick. The prison tower will probably be about 16 to 20 metres tall and the western curtain wall about 12 to 16 metres. Same construction method, dress stone, rubble infill and I will be putting in a levelling course. And I will also be fixing it so that it's right. At least I'm consistent with my errors. See? Lastly, I get to mark out the boundaries of the Great Hall. Again, great just means large. This is 12 by 24 blocks long. They're traditionally one and a half to three times as long as they are wide. So this is two, so it fits well into that. I've got doors at the far end for the kitchen and the buttery. There'll be access to the Great Tower from the hall and also access to the private apartments, which will be along the south wall where the crane is currently. There are end cards on the screen. I'm off to quarry more stone and to upgrade this well to 117 so I can get some deep slate. Bye.